from the com campaigner in chief. So, what did we get, and what does it mean to investors? David Drucker is a reporter for Roll Call, and James Petrokoukis is a money and politics columnist for Reuters Breaking Views, and also a CNBC contributor. So, Jimmy P, let me put you to work first. Investors want to know two right. basic, basic questions. Will President Obama's proposals actually grow the economy? And number two, will it reduce the deficit? Uh, well, I mean, on paper, uh, the president's plan would reduce the deficit over over 12 over 12 years. Uh, from a problem, I mean, right now we have a deficit running about 10 to you know 9 to 10 percent of GDP. His plan over a decade or so would bring it down uh, to maybe close to 2 percent. Now, the problem with the president's plan. Is that's about as far as it go. He really still does not have a longer-term debt plan. Uh, his plan would still uh, let let spending rise tremendously in those out decades. So we still have to see some more specifics from the president on that. But now at least he has something to talk about against the Ryan plan. His first budget, which came out earlier this year, would have made the deficit sharply worse over the next 10 years. So at least now he has something to put on the table. But that's something to put on the table, David, includes uh, raising taxes everywhere, failing, some say, on entitlement reform, and also it was pretty scathing and confrontational, uh, at least uh, according to some of the reports this morning. Uh, will that poison any sort of compromise moving forward for the debt limit or for the 2011 budget, for that matter? Well, I don't think it's going to help. I, we'll have to see what happens with the fiscal year 2011 budget later today. I think they might manage to get out of town without messing this deal up. Uh, but the debt limit's going to be a real test, Nicole. Uh, it goes to the heart of what Republicans and Democrats stand for around here fiscally, and Republicans are going to drive a hard bargain to get their vote on the debt limit. I think the biggest obstacle to agreement with the president on fiscal year 2012 is his call for tax increases. Republicans are never ever going to accept tax increases as a part of any deal you could possibly imagine and so forget it and the president and the republicans are going to have to come to some other sort of agreement um, and, and i think it did catch republicans a little off guard that he went after the ryan budget in the way that he did he was never going to like it he was never going to agree with it um, but there were ways to go about couching his disagreement and instead he did it in a very overtly political way nothing wrong with that uh, but it just left republicans shaking their head going nothing's really changed hi yeah i mean i think just from an international perspective um, you know, looking at this from afar, um, I think it's interesting that um, Obama's, you know, he's made some steps forward here. It's a positive. Moody's, the ratings agency, came out this morning and said, actually, this is credit positive, what he said. Um, from an international perspective, the U.S., they've got to get this sorted out. There, there is no, there's no time left for them. They need to somehow get this political wrangling out of the way and get something conclusive on the table and get a deficit reduction plan underway. They need austerity because at the moment the dollar is getting killed here. Um, the dollar is getting really hurt and the longer this ongoing discussion with the Republicans and Democrats goes on, the worse it's going to be. So they need to address their budget deficit right now, otherwise internationally, you know, their, their, the strength of their economy you know, relative to the rest of the world is going to get further damaged. Jimmy P, I want to bring you in on this. You know, obviously weakening, weakening the dollar, and you know, some are also concerned that so much of this gridlock is going to poison the debt ceiling that we talked about. But the idea that we could default on uh, our treasury debt, which is a cataclysmic situation, can it get to that? Uh, listen, when I, when I, you know, when I talk to, you know, especially when I talk to Republicans, they say, well, you know, how do we get a deal on the debt ceiling? Republicans, now, especially since they think this 2011 uh, budget deal uh, w was, was terrible, uh, that, that's really, again, that, talk about poisoning the water. That's really poisoning the water so they, they get a, a deal quickly on this debt ceiling. I, I'm, I'm not sure how we get from here to there. I know we have to get to there because we can't have a default. But the exact, uh, you, know, uh, you know, way they're going to come to a deal, uh, is it going to be a balanced budget amendment? Is it going to be some of the Ryan plans going to get tacked onto this debt ceiling? Uh, I'm not really sure what kind of plan can really pass, only that I know ultimately something has to pass. Uh, but I think it's going to be pretty scary for markets until we get there. Yeah, but is, is it the, David, the Ryan plan uh, that President Obama is actually using and flipping on its head the Erskine Bulls Commission that basically called for lower taxes and he's some say flipping that around to call for a raise in taxes and eliminate some of that deduction. Is it a bait and switch? Is that a double tax? 
Well, I don't, I don't know if it's a double tax. I think what the president did was uh, sort of give a shout out, if you will, to his left flank and say, look, I'm going to the center a little bit in terms of trying to deal with entitlement programs, which his base, by the way, was very unhappy with yesterday. But in calling for taxes on wealthier Americans, which generally classifies any individual making 200,000 a year or more and married couples making 250, um, he, he's trying to show that he has a balanced approach, that he's not completely jumping in with the Republicans. I, I think that what's notable here is that both sides are now talking about entitlement reform, and it's something we've never really seen in Washington. And I think that's one positive takeaway um, you can take from all of this. Um, and I, I think, again, the first test will be the debt ceiling. I think it will go to the 11th hour because the disagreements are going to be huge. But I think they will find a way to get it done because I think everybody in Washington understands that you can't have a default. Um, but the tax issue is going to be a problem that they're going to have to work through. But it's not one they have to work through until September, October. David, we appreciate your time this morning. David Drucker of Roll Call, uh, Jimmy P, and Pierce, stick around for uh, another segment. Coming up, we are going to look at who wins and who loses in the competing White House Republican budget and deficit standoff we were just talking about. You're watching Worldwide Exchange on CNBC, first in business worldwide.